that people who are Christians in the church are keeping in their hearts. We have looked at properties of Satan, unteachable disposition. Properties of Satan, stubbornness. And uh, unteachable disposition, we saw that <laughs> there are a number of things that make it to be. Pride. People that are unteachable are doing that out of pride. And what pride? Pride of I know better. Pride of I've gone to school. Pride of I've been there. Pride of is it that I will sit down and this person will be teaching me? And so they choose to be unteachable. And one other thing is a, a professional pride. You are a professional in a particular field. Say you are an engineer, an accountant, a lawyer, or whatever. And you carry your professional pride and your certificate and you loaded your heart with it. And you, dis you decided you decided to be blind to the fact that there are division of labor in every area and professionally too you have your division you have your area there you can talk as a professional but in other aspects like in the aspect of spirituality you are not a professional there therefore you should pipe down and listen to those that are gifted to teach and they will teach you there are people that come to church and they carry their chieftaincy title from their from the society. Oh well, each year or the more they carry it to church. Well, the only thing is that we that we spare them is if they don't bring themselves here. They bring themselves here, or somebody bring them, and we tell them to keep or the more and each year and no do anything. Put it in your pocket and let's hear the word of God. The Ethiopian eunuch, or the man that is in charge of the properties of the queen of Ethiopia, when he came to Jerusalem and was going home and read Isaiah chapter 53 and couldn't understand. And God, seeing that the man wanted to know, he sent Philip. And the Spirit of God carried Philip to the place the man was going. And said, do you understand what you are reading? He said, how can I understand? Unless somebody teach me. He said, come into the chariot. Philip jumped into the chariot and taught him Jesus. And the man said, what is holding you to get me baptized? He said, if you believe. He said, I believe. They stopped the chariot and took him to the water, baptized him. And the man went. And the Spirit of God carried Philip again to Azotus. So, if you don't humble yourself, if you claim you know, if you think nobody can teach you, you will remain without being taught. This is the first property of Satan that can be very destructive, and some people are carrying it. Praise the Lord. Now, I illustrated this property of Satan someday here. Let me do it again. I say that it is like you are coming to somebody's house, or you came to somebody's house, and uh, you perceive the aroma of the nice food they are cooking. And um, they themselves made up their mind they are not going to invite you to their table. And then as you are leaving, you left your glasses. And you left your wallet and your phone. And then you went to the toilet and hung your shop. And then you left. By the time you cover some distance and you're sure that the food is ready and is on the table, you return. And you ring the bell. You say, who is coming to our house by this time? Oh, it's pastor. Pastor is coming back. Maybe he forgot something. Will you not open the door? You, you, I say you must. You must open the door so that I collect what I left behind. And as I come in now, 
that food that you don't want me to eat. He said, hey, Pastor, we're on the table. Oh. I did it purposely to come back and meet you at the table. Now, the devil makes the same plan in the lives of the people. When you come to the word of God and you're listening, and you didn't deal with issues in your life, the devil will be planting things that will always open the door for him to come back. Even when you said you are now becoming mature, because those things are there, whenever he knocks, you will open. When you have flair for women, when you have flair for aggrandizement and show up, the devil will know what to deposit in your heart. Whenever he knocks, you open. Therefore, it is the meaning of the properties of Satan in the heart of the believers. We saw also the state of stubbornness, the, the property of stubbornness, which is a state of being repeatedly determined not to change one's wrong attitude or wrong opinion. That's stubbornness. Let me show you an example in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. That was what God said about Saul, the first king of Israel. Some people call stubbornness a virtue. You know, people don't push me around, you know. People don't just push me around. I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a guy that nobody pushes around. My friend, take your time. Check what is happening to you because the Lord who created the heart knows the heart of all men. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, from verse 23, or let me take you from verse uh, 20. Two, Samuel said because he asked Samuel, uh, he asked Saul, I'm hearing the cry of animals here. What does that mean? God told you to go and wipe away the Amalekites. Why am I hearing the cries of animals? And Samuel uh, and um, and Samuel said unto him, You brought these animals. Had the Lord any interest or delight in your bond offerings and in your sacrifices as he is interested in obeying the voice of the Lord? God is more interested in obedience, not sacrifice. It's not what you sacrifice that he's looking at. He's interested in your obedience, submission. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. That is to hear and do what you are told to do is better than the, the sacrifice of rams. Now, in verse 23, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. You see how God sees rebellion. When somebody will rebel and say, I'm not going to do it. This is what you are expected to do. This is what you should do. I'm not going to do it. And the person goes out. Reading, look, there are many people. There was a man. I brought him into the office here. He was in one of our locations before. But now he has gone to start his own church. He went from his location to one place where a woman uh, was living. I don't know what a woman is there. And stayed overnight. And slept with a woman. And from there, two of them came to workers' meeting. And as after preaching in the workers' meeting, I preached. And I called him. I said, can you close the prayer for us? He came out and began to pray. Pray for us and we closed. And we went. The woman traveled from that, that place and came here. And here we sat. He said, Pastor, I have not get my peace again. That social person came and slept with me in my house. And two of us came to work as meeting. And you asked him to pray, and he was praying, and I was looking at him. Two of us committed sin. I said, Really? He said, Yes. I said, If I call him, he will. He said, Yes. I said, Okay. I called him. And then I called my pastor. I said, What am I going to do? Look, look. He said, Call him first, discuss with him, and hear from him. And I told him, this is the discipline of the church. He said, okay. 
Pastor Tony, let me tell you. You are losing something. I say losing what? He said, I have fire in my bone. Are you listening to me? He said, inside this office here, he said, I have fire in my bone. That you and Jesus will lose that, that, will lose that fire. I say, if it is the fire to be sleeping with the women, we, have you, we ask you to watch over and preach to. Carry that your fire and go. Huh? And he left. Now he has begun church. I don't know whether it's progressing or not. That's not my interest. But that church, somebody will go there and that man will lay hand on you. Don't you know what they have put upon your head? He didn't take the discipline. He didn't take the, the correction. And he didn't repent. And he went away and started church. And some people say, what is wrong in it? Billion things are wrong in it. He has a contrary spirit. The spirit is operating with is not the spirit of God. Out of stubbornness, he said, I cannot take the discipline. Okay. The Bible said, if a man sin, the people in authority should what? Discipline him. So that others will do what? Fear. And the church will be clean. Find out the person that is pastoring you. What is his testimony? How did he start? People don't care about these things, but you should care. Jumping up and down. Sometimes you get to the place, the way they furnish the place, and things are very, oh, you see, this place is very nice. Yes? What's the foundation? This other day in Nigeria, the man that built the first church with the air condition and everything, a girl came and said, when I was staying around in the house, he raped me. And after raping the girl, ministry began to grow. And after some time, the girl said, I can't keep this in anymore. I blow it open. Whether she blew it open out of her ill will or whatever, the thing came out. So, people manifest stubbornness by refusing to change wrong attitude and wrong opinion. The same thing with self-will. There are people that are self-willed. They carry it to church. This is the way these things should be done now. Or they may not tell you that they will not do it. They say, okay, I understand. And they will go and do what? They are self willed people. They are stubborn people. Listen to me. When you have that threat in you, it will not stop you from praying. It will not stop you from getting some miracles. But that thing is a killer disease. Now this morning, we are looking at the word motive that is the property of satan wrong and ungodly motives what is motive motive means reason for or underlying cause the reason you are doing something the reason for which you are doing something to get at something there are people that have the tendency to do what we look outwardly good, outwardly harmless, outwardly innocent, outwardly godly. But behind that action is a wrong motive. Behind that action is an ungodly motive. Sometimes you can see in the world a man begins to lavish a woman with gifts. Or a woman begins to show kindness to a man, ask after his welfare, ask after his uh, health, ask after his parents, ask after his job. I mean, the woman is everywhere asking after the person's welfare. And you ask yourself, what is the reason for this? If you check very well, there is an underlying motive. And there is an underlying reason why that woman chooses to do all that to get at something. She knows what. He knows what. So, 
wrong and ungodly motives are also properties of Satan that people keep in their heart. The Holy Scripture is full of characters that have such tendencies to do things with wrong, ungodly motives. I'll show you a few of them. Brethren, the Bible said that God tries the heart. God tries the heart. God weighs every action. The only time you begin to feel the sense of right, right living is when you subject your thoughts and your actions to God's scrutiny. That is to present it unto God. That's why the Bible said that you should present your heart and your conscience unto God. And when you look at it in the light of God's word and truth, that there's nothing wrong in it. That's when you begin to put on confidence that you're doing the right thing. But if you don't subject it to God's scrutiny, you cannot be confident. You cannot have the assurance that you're doing the right thing. Oftentimes, people do something in order to get at something and they'll cover up. They try to show that it is out of zeal, out of love, but they know what they are looking for. Sometimes some people will give reports about another person. What about Susan brother? Mm. Well, that brother, well, I don't want to say, I don't want to say. He has finished everything about that person. You, you got what I'm saying. He has finished what you want to say about the person. Back home, when, when we were not Christians, you see, and in that neighbor's house, there are some girls, mature for marriage. And a suitor, or a would be suitor, is sending people around, and they came to this house. For this thing not to happen there, you know what that man in that family or the wife will say? He said, uh, you are looking for somebody to marry. He said, yes. Uh, did anybody direct you to that house? He said, no. He said, okay. You can go. No, I didn't say anything. That is all the person had to say. And if you ask that foolish man or foolish woman, he said, what did I do? What did I do? You know what you did. We cannot carry that kind of thing into Christianity. If you bring it into Christianity, you are damning your soul. We don't say words, you know, that is like a loop. You throw it, you know it will land here. And you are throwing it as though it's going there. But you know what you mean. We don't do it as Christians. We are plain. So, we don't do things with evil motive. Now, let me show you an example. There was a man called Onan in the book of Genesis, chapter 38. Can you read with me, please? Onan. I'm reading from Genesis, Genesis chapter 38, 7 to 10. And heir, Judah's son, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord slew him. This person, he showed this evil motive and God killed him. Verse 8. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her. And raise up seed to thy brother. Because the brother had died. According to their tradition. And Onan knew that the seed that will be gotten will not be his. So it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled his seed on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Wherefore, he slew him also. When he should pass seed into the woman's body for the brother to have a child, 
He didn't do that. But he went in as though he was obeying his father's instruction. And God slew him. That was the culture of the time in question. Look at another one, Ammon, David's son. This one began to faint sick. He began to faint sick. They said, what's the problem? And his friend asked him, what is the problem? He said, I want my sister, my half-sister, my, uh, my, my stepsister, Tama. He says, that's all. Oh, you're feeling sick. Do as if you are sick, very sick. And then send for your father, David. When he comes, tell him that, Father, I just want Tama to come and cook food for me. Don't want anybody to disturb me. Only her to come and cook for me. And then he did that. And David said, is that all? He said, yes. So Tama will come. So David went and sent Tama. Not suspecting anything. You know, there are parents that are not very thoughtful. Sometimes you see little children, including your child and another child, and they are doing some things, hide and seek them. And you throw your eyes away. I don't throw my eyes away. Because they, many of them know something more than you. So I don't throw my eyes away. I look and see what they are doing. So David said, oh, no problem. And Tama came, prepared the thing, and you know, Amon said, let everybody that is here get away. All the people got away. And he closed the door and locked it. And then Tama said, Tama, come into my bedroom and bring me the food. And when the girl brought the food, he took the food and raped the girl. When people want to get something with ulterior motives, it's the property of Satan in the heart. What about Absalom? Absalom, in order to take away David's uh, rulership over Israel, want to overthrow his father. You know what he did? After that, you know that this thing that I just told you now, uh, when Amnon raped um, Tamar, the news went, and Absalom called Tamar and said, my sister, don't cry. Don't worry. Eh, don't worry. And the people thought that there is peace. Then one day, Absalom prepared a feast and called all the king's sons and told King David to come. David said, uh -uh, how can all of us come and become a burden for you to serve all of us? Just serve your brothers. I won't come. And they went. Amnon, uh, sorry, Absalom told some people, he said, give Amnon enough wine to drink. And when he is merry, kill him. Say, leave the problem for me. So in that feast, as they were eating, king's children, all of them gathered and were dancing. And suddenly, they, some people took knife and killed Amnon. And they said, you raped my sister and you thought I have forgotten? I'll pay you back. So all the children of David, they ran away and told David that your children that went to party in the house of Absalom, that many of them are killed. David ran, only to discover it was only Amnon. And so from that point, Absalom ran away. After many years, somebody put word in the mouth of a woman to speak to David. After that, David said, okay, let him come back. So he returned and went and stood at the gate. When somebody is coming, went to go and see the king, to, to lay complaint unto the king. He said, what is the problem? Come here. The person will come. You know, a very handsome man. The hair of this man, Absalom, is on the ground. So he will stand there and say, come here. What's the problem? Come down. He will take the person after the, oh, he will kiss the person and say, I wish I am the king of Israel. I will help you. That's why I just want that. If I am the king, this kind of matter, I will vindicate you. I will, I will bring, it, bring you out of it. And by doing so, he was stealing the minds of the people. As they are coming, he will steal their minds. And they were all looking onto Absalom as a very good person. And shortly, he went to overthrow David. But he had an evil mind. That's what we are talking about. About ulterior motives. Or wrong motives. The people that are guilty of this unfortunate character 
are reminded of the fact that the Lord that we are dealing with knows what is in the heart and we reward every man's actions. Take note. God that we are dealing with searches the heart and tries the reins and we give unto every man according to his work shall be. Brethren, I think I count myself and we ourselves pretty late to have a church where truth is given to us and not just go, going about dancing Christianity, shouting Christianity, and then the ingredients that make for a Christian life is not there. And that is what will be the greatest disappointment of many. And that was why Anna, when her co-wife had mocked her for a long time, and eventually God honored her and gave her Samuel, and from Samuel to other children, she said in second in first Samuel chapter 2, verse 3, talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him all actions are weighed. Actions are weighed. And then in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 13. In Hebrew chapter 4, look at verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest, that is open unto God in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. There is nothing we are doing or thinking that God does not see. Now, if you know that, why do you play games? You are living your life as though God doesn't see the secret of your life. So you come to God plain. This wicked character called wrong motive has done and is still doing damages to the people in the church, to people in business, to families in the church. Sometimes it manifests itself when people that think they are not secured make reports about people in authority against people that are above them only with ulterior motives in which case they choose to say things either to flatter and paint the person good but they don't mean to paint good but they want to use that to cover up what they want to do on the ground they flatter people in authority either to gain some merit, to gain some favor, or they will stand to unfairly criticize, condemn, and bring down somebody that they consider as an obstacle to their ascension. Think of it. Somebody, you look at a person and you you look at that person and say, you perceive that person as an enemy. And then you go about looking for how to dig around him so that he will fall. A number of people are doing it. What I have said to anybody that cares to know, the Bible said that envy is rottenness of the bones. If you are envious, it says it's the rottenness of the bones. Why should you be envious? When you know that the God that gave to that person is your God. If that person went to him and the Lord blessed him, why don't you go to him? Some people choose to stay awake and pray through the night and God begins to bless them and favor them. Now, if you see it is happening in their lives, rather than go to dig them down, bring them down, perceive them as your enemy, no. Do that thing they did. Call upon God. Make the necessary sacrifices. If he needs you to pray, pray. Fast, go ahead. Study your scripture and pray. Do that. What God did for them, 
he will also do for you in Jesus' name. So, we are saying that doing damage to the reputation of another person to hurt them without making things plain. You know, that's the way somebody can make mistake and you said you are wanting to correct it. You are wanting to... The, 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 the only thing you want to do is that so that there will be righteousness. But these are things you could have called the person aside and said, brother, this thing you are doing is not good or I don't know whether you observed it. Please, stop it. It's not good. You didn't do that. But what you did was to just take the information, give it to the people in authority, not because what the person is doing, that it is bad and it's affecting the church. God is not happy with it. That's not your reason. But the reason of reporting it is that let them, let them bring him down. Let him bring him down. Yes, you have exposed the evil he has done. If he is penalized, good, he will be penalized. But you are not guiltless. You didn't do it because you are correcting evil. You did it as a punitive measure to punish him. Christians don't do that. And you know what? The good side of it is this. If you are patient with that person to tell him that, to correct him, and he gets corrected and amends his life, something happens. Whenever you are exposed, whenever you fall into error, people will not judge you critically. They will always want to, in fact, not will, but God will compel them to treat you the way you treated others. You didn't use somebody's weakness to destroy him, to run him down. When you, your weakness will manifest anywhere, anytime, you see people coming and saying, I know you are wrong. I know this thing could end you jail, but don't do it again. And I will not tell it to anybody. Promise me you are not going to do it again. I mean in the place of work. Not even a Christian We come and tell you that. I know you did this thing. I saw when you did it. For your sake, if you correct it for your sake, I'm going to delete this thing in the record. But don't do it again. And that thing could have earned you a sack. But because you treated another person with good mind, good understanding, a friend in church, at times it surprises. It's surprising. You see people that say they are Christians. And because somebody has gift, and this person does not have that gift. You see them making effort to talk as though that gift is not important. Right? What is it? Everybody, everybody is talking about that. Talking like, is that the only gift? No, that's envy. What gift do you have? That gift is also as important as what gift the other person has. Don't run that person down. And then nobody will also run down your gift. With whatever measure you meet out unto other people, with the same measure, it will be measured back unto you. Brethren, these principles and these rules that you are hearing, keeping them will guarantee that you are going to heaven. Not keeping them will make you to be equal to the people that are either sinners and those that are saying they are Christians. But these things, nobody thinks about them. They don't bother themselves because they've told themselves I am not going to church to be talking about sin, sin, sin. I'm going to church to hear about grace, grace, grace. That's those people. And the Bible said, should we continue in sin so that grace will abound? Say, God forbid. So we are in church to treat the malady, the sickness of sin. The only problem we have as human beings is what? Sin. That's what separates us from God. Without sin, we don't have problems. Praise the Lord. So we are going to conclude with it. Now it says, such people are often given to eye service. No? Some of them will give flamboyant testimonies to, to, to flatter the pastor. Or some pastors will come and give large and big testimony 
So that people will look at them as though they have great power of God, but it is just, oh, we have gotten people that came here and gave testimonies. But what they were doing is, targeting is after they've given their testimonies, and the church will clap and clap and clap. They will look at people. If they see that you are dressed very well, they come to you. <laughs> you know, and the person that gave that testimony, yes, brother, that your testimony is so great. Say, my brother, you know, whenever God is using you like this, Satan will always be pursuing you up and down uh, as, as you are seeing your brother. So, uh, in fact, my, my house strength has finished. I just uh, I don't know. God is persuading me to tell you, maybe you can help me with the house rent. Because you just got excited that he gave a testimony. And you call your wife, you call your husband, you count some money and give to him. He has gotten what he wanted. There are people like that. So open your eyes, shine your eye. You. Because revival is coming. And when things begin to happen now, all those people will sneak in. Come and share your, their wonderful testimonies. How they prayed. And when they were in the toilet, Jesus appeared. They are doing that and they are saying that in order to hook, hoodwink you. Hallelujah. Now, some people give eye service and hypocrisy in what they are doing. The major factors responsible for this unbecoming attitude in them are their selfishness, the lack of the, their lack of the fear of God, which are the indices of absence of divine love, godly love. The Christian are expected to con be content with what they have. Be honest. Be plain in dealings, in dealing with other people, and throw away inordinate and excessive ambitions for, for, for popularity, for riches, for anything. All those things lead to such satanic manifestation as we saw in Absalom, as we saw in Judas, who came and came and kissed Jesus. Hail, Master. But it was identification for the people that are coming to arrest Jesus to know him. He came and kissed him. And Jesus turned and said, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? People do that. Hey, sister. And they do that. But they know that they have, look, before they come to do that, they have finished you with their companions. And as soon as you appear, they say, hey, brother me. Oh. All the people that are with him, they know what he has told them. And then begin to do that. Let us pray. Husbands, don't play the same game to your wife. Wives, don't play the same game to your husband. Children, shouldn't play that to their parents. And parents, to children. Let's pray. Pray to have perfect love. Perfect love. Holy love. Clean love. For your husband and wife. For the church. For the members of the household of God. Have perfect love. Don't pretend. Don't say what you don't mean. Don't paint a picture of what is not true. Don't 
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, I don't know why you are cold. I think you should be you should be happy that this truth is made known to us. And when some of them you didn't even remember, and some of them you were doing and you didn't think that they were wrong, and now that they have been exposed to you, I think you should sincerely go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. I can't go this way anymore. It's over. I'm starting anew. That's what you should do. If you get angry that we have told you the truth, you have not still cured yourself of that uh, sickness. So I want you to pray and tell the Lord to have mercy on you. Tell the Lord to forgive you. Tell him that you're not going back to that old way. Businessman, don't package something you know is not true and uh, give it when you know that the thing has some loopholes or some, some problems. And then somebody will tell you, it's business, it's business. It's not true. If you want to buy a car here, the seller will tell you what the problem of the car is that made him to sell it. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear this promise of God. The Bible said that he maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flaming fire. He said in the book of Psalm 104 verse 30, he said, send forth your spirit and they shall be created and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. The face of the earth is not the face of Italy or the face of Padova. It is the face of your life and the face of my life. Listen to me, you can be better. In fact, you can get to the perfect nature God wants you. I say you can. I say you can. I say you can. Brethren, I'm, I'm, I mean what I'm telling you. I cannot preach some things. I cannot preach self. But I tell you, these things, there are things I keep crying unto God about. The day they left me, I wouldn't know. You see, you can pray. The thing is, do you desire to reach that height? Yes, you can. God wants you to be saved. God wants you to reach that level. It is the Father's good pleasure to do what? To keep you the kingdom. So I want you to pray now and tell the Lord that the grace to live above this ulterior motive or ungodly motive, I receive it today. Pray. Pray. I say pray you can achieve it. Grace spirit. Grace spirit. Grace spirit. Other spirit reverence you. Grace spirit. Grace spirit. Grace spirit. Other spirit reverence you. My Father in glory. I want to ask you, blessed Father, one by one, none of these things will remain. Crush them, O oh Lord. Uproot them out of our heart and minds. All the people, Lord, that have discovered this ulterior motive, ungodly motive in their hearts, Lord, have mercy, O oh Lord. Deliver your children. Set men free. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Walk it out, O oh Lord. If you are there, 
and you know you did something wrong, and that thing you did is always bringing his head up again in your relationship with your husband or with your wife, the only way you can enter into peace is to humble yourself and own up these faults in your life and tell God to have mercy upon you. And he will. And he will. God doesn't want you to perish. Neither your wife or your husband or your children. He doesn't want any of you to perish. Grace Spirit. Grace Spirit. Grace Spirit. Father Spirit. Reverence you. They reverence you. Grace Spirit. Grace Spirit. You have a spirit, and I have a spirit. When we say grace spirit, we are saying we are subjecting our spirit to the spirit of the Almighty God. When your spirit and my spirit bow and submit to the Almighty God, these things you see today, you see them no more. Grace spirit. Grace spirit. Almighty Father. Grace Spirit, all the spirits reverence you. They reverence you. Grace Spirit, Grace Spirit. Oh, Grace Spirit, Adonai, Grace Spirit, Mighty God, Grace Spirit, all the spirits reverence you, they reverence you. Grace Spirit, Grace Spirit, Grande Fossa, Musicara, Oh, they reverence you. Oh, okay, Kemwa, Grace Spirit, Grace Spirit, yes. Lord, this morning, you are the great spirit. Every other spirit is subject to you. I pray this morning, by the power of anointing, by the power of the Holy Ghost, all the people that have been conquered by this evil threat, of ulterior motives, ungodly motives, and it has been ruling them, and they thought it is the way of being wise. They thought it is the way of being smart, but it is their way of smarting to hell. But now that they realize, Father, by your power and by the anointing, lay the yokes of this threat of these characters in their lives, in our lives, completely be broken this moment in Jesus' name. All the people that have taken it upon themselves, as though it is a virtue, let them lose the potency. Those that it has entered into their morals, let it lose their grip over their hearts. Let them be free. Therefore, Lord, grant that your children will be free in their heart to serve you 
in plainness and in sincerity in Jesus' name. Thank you for answered prayers. Lord, another Sunday has come. Another week has begun. Lord, I pray as we go out to face the week, let the strength of the Lord and let the power of the Lord follow us anywhere we go. Father, those people that have recorded losses, confusion, disorganized life, in fact, looking at their life and seeing, asking what has been happening to them, I pray this moment, O oh Lord, an amendment will start from now. Let amendment start in their lives now. Let them begin to recover themselves now. Let the things they have lost, my father, begin to be returned back unto them as they realize and repent where they ought to repent so that your blessings will overflow. In Jesus' name, thank you for answer to prayers. Lord, make this church a church that is building up their Christian faith upon a solid Christian foundation so that the winds and the waves will not carry any one of them away in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know that you've answered. Lord, open the windows of heaven and lavish upon us all kinds of blessings that we require for victory, for success, in all ramifications of life. So that, Lord, there will be testimonies in the house. Glory be to your most holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.